Right. Good afternoon uh, to you. Um, um, my name is Dave Havertz. I'm CEO of DPA Global, and we will be trying to visualize a day in the life of a tax professional in 2025. I have with me uh, my friends Akash and uh, Mashuk from uh, Signet Infotech. Uh, they are, just to give you a, a heads up, they are running uh, the uh, e-invoice uh, platforms also for the Indian government. Uh, I think uh, about 20% of the traffic on GST these days and e-invoices run through that platform. So they're a real, a real uh, mover and shaker in the market. And they have been thinking with me on how a day in the life of a tax professional really looks like. And, and that's what we bring to you today. We have a program where I start addressing a few themes, uh, do a little bit of a reprise of the first two sessions. So you guys uh, who missed that uh, get, get sort of a quick update um, because this is the third session on tax digital work spots. And, and what we noticed in the, in the market is that uh, there's quite a, a high appetite to start talking about tax digital work spots and how what the costing is and what the models are and what the dashboarding is uh, around it. So um, there will be a few polls where we would uh, like you to participate and uh, get a little bit uh, the interaction with the audience. So please, uh, uh, please participate on that. So a few illustrations to kick off, a few illustrations. This is the tax digital work spot as we visualized it uh, um, two, two sessions ago where we said, okay, if you are a tax knowledge worker, you need uh, communication and planning. Well, we're on Zoom. Uh, you can be on, uh, on, uh, on Teams, whatever automation is taking place there, connecting the world in a much more digital way. Then there will be um, the need for, and in this case, the compliance tracker, uh, Akash and Mashuk will talk about, is a tracker on how uh, gives you sta status insight and actionable insight on where you are with your 100% com tax compliance agenda. Um, again, there is process automation, so it keeps you in the discipline of doing everything on time with the right people. Then obviously, once you have uh, that process in a digital format, you can do production automation, where, where in this particular case, TP Genie, a production tool for transfer pricing reports is being visualized as, uh, as the production automation uh, uh, um, in, in the dashboard. And then you need a digital intelligent agent, which is the knowledge automation we, we will talk about. We will have one or two slides on chat uh, GPT and how that filters into a typical transfer pricing or tax practice in general. So this is the visualization we uh, we looked at before. If we move to the next slide, it sort of is, is the world of transfer pricing uh, I'm quite familiar with and, and probably most of you as well, where on the left side, uh, so I, I've sliced the process of uh, transfer pricing, pr pr preparing and filing TP documents with tax authorities, I sliced it in four basic blocks. The first is I have uh, data, which may be through Python, but runs through filters, which means I know on what transactions and what entities I meet thresholds, and that creates a production calendar, step one. Then I feed that production calendar to a compliance tracker, which is the process automation we talked about on the previous slide. And that starts um, uh, starts defining what who is doing what uh, on on which of the outputs, and, and does that still meet the deadline? Um, and and then basically, I feed that process technology and uh, and into a production technology tool, this TP Genie, where the pro production process there is. I create benchmarks, frozen blocks on industry, company, and, uh, and transactional profiles, which are then complemented by an intercompany transactional table and segmented p &Ls. If you glue them all together, you have your local TP file. So that's step three. Step four is filing it with the tax man. Uh, the form, the master file, it's, it's all in the same 
um, same uh, group of uh, documents to be prepared uh, and documents to be filed. The old process we looked at sometimes took between four and 18 months. The new process we are rolling out in the next two years is between four and eight weeks. Uh, just to, to get the notion, why do you automate? Well, we automate because we believe the whole process could be a lot quicker, a lot more smoother, and a lot more digital. Right? So if we move to the next slide, that's sort of giving you a, a, a first dashboard already. This is the session we did uh, a while ago, not too long ago, with eClear. eClear is a real-time transaction monitoring um, system which has um, a VAT tool, uh, by the way, like uh, SIFNET has a VAT tool R7 as well. Uh, this uh, it, it has a presence in mostly uh, the EU and has also a banking license. So it could uh, run uh, certain transactions on your behalf uh, because they have a bank license. This is their uh, dashboard, which uh, uh, and this is a dashboard used uh, when you have omni-channel merchants um, running transactions over a platform. Let's say a platform is Amazon, then this is how your dashboard uh, dashboard as a merchant could look like. So this this is sort of giving you two uh, two illustrations of the the sessions we we run before. If we move to the next slide. Um, yeah, this is sort of the benefits for the merchants and benefits for the marketplaces. And that this eludes a little bit on an EU development some of you may be aware of. So there's a, there's a, a DAC 7 um, rules or regulations coming up where the, the platform owner is accountable for what the merchants sell through the platform in terms of uh, VAT liability. So you get a chain liability. That also means you're the owner of the platform. You should actually be able to display and share the, the value and volume of what your merchant sells through your platform with the, with the, ta the tax authority. So there's a, there's a dual reporting almost by the platform itself and by the merchants. And as you can imagine, the tax authorities, I'm sure, connect the dots on those data flows. Next slide. So who makes all this digital transformation happen? That's, I think, a big question. Uh, we, we looked into tax talent. We looked into future tax jobs. And here is a few interesting ones. You have a VAT technology professional. I think uh, certainly Akasha Mashuk uh, will, will fall in that category. There's a lot of technology optimization where the, the system and the algorithm interacts with the, the, the humans, uh, the, humans the human intervention on data flows before it goes into VAT return uh, and gets filed. Um, there's a, a tax litigation automation analyst. We're working on a moot court later this year where we have uh, tax litigators use the Tax Sutra database from, uh, from India which has the largest uh, court database on tax cases. And we have uh, natural uh, language processing tools uh, to, to be used to select the relevant court cases, relevant for the case you're looking at, uh, with a, a, giving you a probability of whether the judge, if you throw your facts into the into the courts, whether the judge will follow your position or not. And obviously the students then need to come up in the moot courts with the arguments because the, the, the engine is not that smart yet that they can also come up with the arguments. Gives you an idea on new titles and, and new roles in the, in the, in the future uh, of people who, ne who need to be there to make this, this digital transformation happen. So if we move on to the next slide, this is another way of looking at it. A lot of tax people suffer from bad data or, or not enough data from their finance and IT department. 
So uh, appointing an EOP tax data modeler, which almost acts as a spy and works within IT and finance to prep the data at the, the time the data gets originated, gets created, and already prep it uh, in terms of readiness for, for use in, in tax returns. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, taxologist, just to pick a, a two of the four, taxologist is the one who, next to the head of tax, the head of tax has the traditional VAT hat, the, the corporate income tax hat, the transfer pricing hat, and tax accounting hat. Taxologist will be um, obviously steering and controlling the, the other roles here on the, on, on the visual. So the ERP tax data model will probably will and the tax data miner will probably report into the taxologist. One of the biggest challenges in, in, in corporates is how do you integrate those two uh, pillars of authority, a taxologist and head of tax with their uh, reports into them. Uh, how do you integrate that into one? And we were involved in quite a few of the tech giants as well in their discussions how to do that integration, but I think that it's a universal challenge of uh, talent and integration of two, diff two different two different um, set of specialists uh, involved in this uh, and, and, and uh, reviewing the same data set. Uh, next slide. Yeah, again, uh, what is talent? And um, well, the core competencies of a modernized. <laughs> yeah. Before you move on, we have a question from audience. What about okay. the alterix should not be listed under the tax data analyst? Yeah, I think uh, we we are currently running an uh, an internal course at uh, at TPA where we look at IT tools and coding languages. I think Alteryx is one of the, the tools you you will have and uh, that that is an other element uh, to, to digitally transform tax workflows. But again, um, the, the variety of tools and coding languages is so wide that I, I in, in, in this table, I'm, I'm explaining that the core competencies of a modernized knowledge worker needs to be a little bit of coding and basic understanding of code, uh, coding and data, modeling, communication skills, project management skills, math and logical thinking, but also the learning um, uh, ability and, and, uh, and being agile to learn new things. The extended competencies means not everyone will be a hero in Alteryx. Not everyone will be a hero in RP RPA or AI or on data mining or on financial modeling. So you will create a cluster of uh, specialists which all have their extended competencies in such a way that you create a fusion team to create the right mix of talent and, 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 uh, and, and skills to run a digital transformation project like this. So one shoe fits all doesn't work here. Uh, we, 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 we were uh, talking to a group of LLM students from Vienna University last Friday, and we explained to them, this is your future. So it's like a candy store. You can pick and choose what, what skills you like and with, which skills you're good at and, and combine that and become part of uh, fusion teams. So multidisciplinary teams which really drive this digital transformation forward. Okay, uh, let's move on. So this is how employers facilitate or don't facilitate talent. So you want talent, you want these fusion teams to really work with the attributes we just looked at. Uh, so the question is who is going to do that to digital transformation? Well, the don'ts are you don't run a top-down organization. You don't plan 40 years of career in the same job. You don't limit people with an exposure to a single role and department. So these are all the no-go zones if you want to keep talent longer than two years. And the head of talent management at Microsoft said if we don't give people a clear facilitating if we don't, don't facilitate our talents good enough, uh, based on the, the, the bullet points at the top, 
then they run away after two years. They, they hit a brick wall and after two years they're gone and we, we need to fully restock our talent team and refresh it from the start. So this is also an element to take into account. How do you, how do you attract the right talent to help you doing this digital transformation? Let's move on. So this is what, what your competition is. If you're in-house tax, um, the, the IT department will, will require uh, people with uh, artificial intelligence, robotic, uh, RPA and data scientist background. Um, but it, as you see that there's more and more IT people leaking away to business areas, including tax. So you're all fishing in the same pond for less and less fish. Uh, and, and, and fish, I mean, in, in the, the fear of speech, the, the tax talent you're looking for could also be a business talent. It could also be a, a finance uh, uh, a talent uh, a type of person. So, so this is what makes it harder to find the right group to do that digital transformation. So the, the human components is the slowest moving part. Uh, and it's very hard to get them and to keep them, and this is why. Okay, let's move on. Before we move on, we have a poll for this part. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Yes. Akash, uh, Mashuk, any observations on talent uh, and how you guys run talent attraction and retention at uh, SafeNet in India? I think here the the technology innovation uh, on both fronts, on the tools that are available into the market as well as the skill set, and on on top of that having the uh, the tax domain and industry experience. I think those are the three key elements uh, that that we also look at and we we would train with uh, the the talent that we are looking for or the joinees that we have got or the interns that we hire. And uh, for, for me personally, I think the most important is definitely uh, the ability to learn on, on the skill set on, on the tech front. And again, having, having some industry domain experience, so to say, uh, because that brings in a lot of value of, of how uh, that particular industry, the, you know, the, Runs. Yeah. the nitty gritty, the, the, yeah, the crux of that industries are going. And in addition to what Akas added and you also added in previous slide, I mean, the technology edge is more important uh, specifically for us as an organization because the way AI, ML, data analytics is taking over the various roles and uh, looking forward to enhance each of them, that that's the most crucial part as well from an innovation perspective that's needed in any candidate that you look forward to proceed with uh, regardless of their experience. Yeah, okay. Thanks, uh, Mashuk. Uh, that's, uh, so AI is, uh, is a, a very important and the interest in AI and how you get the talents uh, uh, embracing AI. So I think we have the results. Yes. So um, any, yeah, this is interesting. 30% uh, says taxologies is by far that, because that's the, the lead guy who needs to orchestrate uh, all these uh, all these data driven tax uh, uh, relevant uh, workflows. Data analysts, ERP data preparer, not everyone's convinced with 10%, uh, although people say 50% says all of the above. So basically, indicating the shortage we already uh, alluded on. Uh, I think there's just a sort of shortage of all these people. So uh, if you don't have the, if you only have the taxologist, it might not be sufficient to, uh, to achieve the right uh, pace for digital transformation of tax workflows. There's a hundred uh, in-house tax workflows, typically with larger corporates and uh, yeah, find the right people to do AT of those transform digitally transformed in the next five years. That's the challenge of all the corporates uh, in, in my true belief. Okay, let's move on. So standardization and automation. Um, like, this is uh, the, the, the gray is where the data gets collected. Uh, 
into a dirty data box and it gets cleaned up. As you see, the arrows from the light blue box uh, where compliance tracker and all sorts of uh, functionality is hiding, the arrow still means there's a serious human intervention on the data flow. Uh, so this is where we are today. If we look at the next picture, then we, we see a different flow. We see the single source of data uh, with a hybrid or single engine model uh, pushing data real time in the digital mailbox of the tax authorities. That's on the right side. And it, and it works following a normative framework. So sourced by tax rules and legislation. So if more and more legislation is zero and one uh, savvy, then it's easier to do a single source of data without any significant human intervention necessary anymore. Um, and if you have to cater for real-time data to tax authorities with no options to cleanse and to clean the data at all, then the only thing that the single source of data is doing, it, 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 uh, it through a tax data engine and content engine, it reports to the humans who are uh, receiving the single source of information through dashboards and, and things like that. So this becomes a little bit the futuristic future in terms of the single source of data will drive only outliers to the left side and only status insight and maybe some actionable insight, but not on data flows, because that's a, a stream directly from source to digital mailbox of tax authorities. So this is converting people's tasks uh, into process and technology, but also is changing the, the workflows for people. Move on. So if tax becomes a regulated uh, industry, we want to standardize and automate only with certified people. So we will address the belt system uh, <clears throat> in a few minutes, a belt system on top of an academic uh, 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 diploma. Uh, certified processes, as, as I told some of you before, is the standard write-up of the tax authorities, how to fill in a corporate income, uh, sorry, a country by country report, a corporate income tax return, a VAT file. That's a certified process. If you follow those rules and instructions, uh, obviously the tax authorities have issued that to become the certified process. More and more, that's what the SIGNET is working on as well. You would require certified technology. It needs to be a perfect blueprint without corrupting the data. Tax, the tax relevant data is your only strategic asset in the future when you're, a, 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 when you're an in-house tax department. Um, we, we're, we're currently having a discussion with uh, one of the larger taxpayers in the Netherlands and they want to build a tax control frame purely on data, not on a, a call with the tax inspector, but on sharing the data with the tax inspector and then have the tax inspector come up with questions if outliers on the data do pop up. Uh, so that's a totally different way of dealing with data. If you organize it this way, there's, uh, there's limited chance of uh, corruption of data or non-compliance. Uh, so the output for taxpayers would be 100% tax compliance. You have a clear real-time visibility on your risk management and you have the proper and in timely communication to all stakeholders. So this is the standardization process. The next slide is telling you a little bit uh, if you have the uh, what we call the tax vision. So what's your end game? Which of the 100 tax workflows do you want to be digitally transformed in the year 2025? If you haven't even decided that, then obviously you're a little bit doing the ad hoc, but not a very structured approach. Then your challenges today with um, uh, each of your five top five challenges might have five solutions, technology, people, or process solutions, whatever. Uh, you will have to rank those solutions based on the, on, the, on the return on investment. Once you've done that, you have, uh, you have the ability to come up with a tax uh, technology transformation plan, which is kind of a roadmap how to get from your challenges today 
to having 10 of your 100 workflows digitally transformed in the year 2025. So this is a very standardized structured approach, uh, which um, the, the, is the only way to convey the CFO and the, the IT people and the heads of tax to put serious money into the game on, on uh, being in control on tax, uh, tax as a whole. Okay, let's move on. This is the illustration on how, how such a step plan could look like and in terms of timeline and what needs to happen. You need to define a roadmap. You need to launch the T3 plan and, and populate it with people. Uh, you need to get the budget organized. Uh, we're not going to go into all the detail, but this is based on uh, a lot of discussions with a lot of corporates. So it sort of is a best in class illustration on, on the timeline you will be looking at realistically. Uh, next slide. So we also have a quick poll here. Yeah, this will be an interesting one. What is the process of standardization uh, or what is the approach to standardization? Uh, Akash Mashuk, any, any ideas uh, what, what you see in the market uh, on standardizing tax workflows? Yeah, so I think nowadays what the, the, the trend that we are, we are looking at especially with uh, not just limited to the tax domain but overall compliance domain uh, which spreads to multiple verticals is that they look at using AI, ML, automation, bots, and bringing those process in a streamlined position. Because until and unless there is a straightforward or there is streamlined process, we cannot automate it further. So the first step has become absolutely streamlining those processes and then working with the tech tech companies and consultants to do the automation and using the technology. I think that's where uh, you have captured both things quite clearly, that having process and technology. So we lay down the process, we streamline it, and we use technology to, to just multiply it and multifold it. And it improves overall compliance as well as it improves the efficiency. Okay. Yeah. As rightly mentioned by Akash, I, I would add to that, that it bases on the digital maturity metrics of the organization any of the four options apply in case if it's a matured organization or an enterprise organization, they would definitely go for something of a tax vision of 2025. But, but whereas uh, it's a developing organization or a mid size organization, they would go on case by case basis on their budgets and the resource allocation that they can do. Yeah, but yeah. any day, a longer term vision helps any of the organization, regardless of the of its size. Yeah, you get into a cultural maturity stage, uh, which which obviously is then able to grasp certain of uh, what we talk about and sometimes not able because they just uh, have to li limited time to run the business model in the first place. Huh? So um, kind of surprising. There's no real tax vision. At least 10% says there is. Um, case by case automation process. We do see that to be the lead um, one of the major uh, flaws we will look at a case by case is that it's 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 the good initiatives by individuals. It's not always very structured. Um, it it is not fitting into an overall plan for the next two three years. Um, and uh, a, a lot of the reasons is not so much that people don't want to do it, but um, uh, there's a few exceptions, of course, but uh, there's all there's there's a whole host of arguments why you do not get the budget to do it properly. Uh, so that's that's always the competing factor is always there's too little money to do the digital transformation of your IT department, your finance department, and your tax department. So if you don't have the right ROI, then the case by case is the only budget you you have to do things on a case by case basis, uh, and, and the obvious flaw there is uh, the the lack of structured approach. Um, still, a selection of tax technology tools been being implemented. That's one way of of uh, standardize and automate things. Uh, one 
personal health warning, if you do a selection of tax technology tools, you should have selected, in my belief already, the, uh, the appropriate certified people and the appropriate certified processes, because then you know what tax technology you, tools you can best use to uh, facilitate the digital transformation. Um, my definition of automation sometimes is incremental improvement and replace uh, human workflows by machine workflows. Uh, that leads to incremental improvement in, to, in terms of time and cost savings and typically to a, to a lot of frustration of everyone involved. So I would say there's, there's, there's success cases certainly but uh, what, what we are looking at is more uh, digital transformation where, for example, uh, one recent project we're working on, um, we, we have tax packs which are uh, reporting data to a central place to run a tax accounting calculation on. We data enrich the tax packs to also uh, spit out the uh, country by country reporting. We data enrich the tax pack reporting again with an, another marginal set of data, and we can run, uh, which we did uh, two months ago, a soft close on pillar two. So suddenly we, we have one data set which caters for three outputs and almost have created um, um, what, what I call a new direct tax reporting standard, either under IFRS or, or US GAAP. So this, this is just an illustration, but yeah, uh, not surprised by the outcome, but uh, certainly there's a few pointers to, uh, to work on. Okay. Um, next slide. So this is a little bit what we've seen um, the reactive way on time spent. So how is the, the, the thing going to impact what you do as a, as a human, as a professional on a day-to-day -day base? Information gathering, uh, tax adjustments, review process, planning and monitoring. Sorry, the first three, typically you would expect the time you spend as a, as a person to go down the planning and monitoring. Uh, so your focus moves from compliance to tax risk management. Uh, that includes, is included in the, in the monitoring as well. The rework is taken over. Uh, reporting still has a human component. Analytics becomes more important. So you want to, like the ERP, data manager, you want to know at source your data is already suitable for tax uh, purposes. And as indicated, risk management becomes your major uh, uh, time spent if you're in the in-house tax department. Simply, you will start looking much more deeper into outliers uh, because you're not constantly um, loaded with running a 100% tax compliance process with no time left to do a risk management analysis. So this is the impact we expect. Uh, and, and this is also one of the drivers you should think about when you define tax vision 2025, which we addressed uh, earlier on. We move on. So, what do we expect from fusion teams? Uh, there's, there's different certifications uh, um, and there's the tax transpising valuation of uh, value chain analysis. There's a certification which is more based on uh, flight hours. So memory trainers uh, looking at use cases of, uh, of digital transformation on tax workflows done by others, uh, which are, by the way, published on the global tax technology community LinkedIn page uh, by a sister company of, uh, of TPA and the belt system. The belt system you guys know probably from uh, supply chain management and Six Sigma. This is similar, but this is addressing flight hours in, on the crossroad of technology and tax. And then uh, the, uh, the question on Alteryx, yes, it would be good if you have a team also uh, exposed to IT tools and coding languages. So this is almost like a, an illustration of what a fusion team 
in terms of attributes should bring to the table to successfully do that digital transformation. Okay. Um, Chat GPT, how do we use it? We start using it for transvising documentation. Uh, we generate training materials. We analyze data and outliers. We uh, use frozen blocks. The, the blocks is left out, but uh, we have replicable uh, uh, text blocks for our TP documentation, which uh, can be in style and format be checked by G Chat GPT. Uh, we we can do pre-controversy checks by checking arguments in in, in the in a in an open AI system like that, and we we have a, a text summaries of emerging um, emerging trends. We are currently at TPA uh, defining the house rules of use Chat GPT in our today's practice. This is dynamic knowledge management and, and automation we're looking at as part of the first slide I showed you guys uh, early to, earlier uh, in the, uh, the first slide of this session. This is going to be big. It's going to um, uh, run um, the, 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 to a different gold standard of how people interact with processes and interact with technology uh, to, to the max almost. So. Okay, let's move on. Belt system, I think we will, uh, Akashi will address it as well, uh, the belt system. Yes, I will. Yeah, so let's skip this one. Let's, yeah, the, yeah, and uh, I would like one slide before we move to, uh, to Akashi and Ashok uh, forward, Mari. We're now going backwards. Yeah, here. So uh, TPN SIGNET uh, connecting the dots. So if you have data coming from source S1 to S4, and you you need real-time data. If you have uh, formatting tools uh, 1 to 4, F1 to 4, uh, to create XML JSON type of uh, formats, then uh, e-invoice in, uh, in India is a very good example. Then you need to cater for those multiple conversions. And then you need someone to sign off on it. So you, you have a, a V1 to a V4 type of um, digital sign-off uh, metrics all in a dashboard where the outcome of those three um, will lead to a qualified real real time data in the right format signed by signed off by the right officer uh, filed in a digital porter portal of the tax authorities. So this is uh, one element uh, of dashboarding. Signet uh, is involved in, but I'll I'll hand over uh, the um, the the room to uh, Akash and Machuk to take us into a few of the tools and a few of the dashboardings they've been doing. Floor is yours. Thanks, Steve. Um, I think very, very well rightly uh, said the context there that uh, you no, know, it's it's more about connecting the dots and taking the data from source and making it ready for real time reporting, uh, ready to file formats and etc. Things. Uh, and also, I'd like to add to top of that, that oh, for for today, a tax professional's life is more than just filing tax returns. They have to ensure the review of data compliance and a lot more. So we'll be talking talking a bit about everything that they do. So let's move forward uh, to the next slide. You might have to share your screen. Sure. I'm sharing you. And just for the audience, uh, last five minutes or seven minutes, we have kept reserved for question and answers. So whatever questions we have in chat, we'll try to address each of them uh, in the last five minutes or seven minutes. Now, primarily the four quadrants that we want to focus on uh, for a tax professional life is around from process, a production knowledge and communication. 
And uh, so to say, if I talk about, let's say, I'll take an example of a persona of a text person or, or a text profession, so to say, uh, on, on the day-to-day -day life, they would be going through a lot of review of data, collation of data, uh, ensuring that their process and supplies, uh, that their purchases, their sales, all the data that they are going to report to the regulatory authorities are aligned and uh, they are they are being reviewed. Now, going through that data and doing the review at the last part during the filing of the return becomes a cumbersome challenge. And that's where we call it that, okay, you should have a checker system, of course, but having a checker system again gives a lot of burden to that person to have something right at the end or do, during preparation of the returns. But we say, let's take a few steps back and go to the processes which are actually generating that data. And that's where the process parts comes into picture. And that's where the whole vendor post box, that's what we call it, comes into picture, which ensures that a purchase data that we are preparing is aligned and is in compliance state, so to say. So whatever uh, purchases you are ma making from your vendors uh, needs to be reconciled, needs to be validated. And at the top of that, it, it should be reviewed and then only posted to your ERP. Uh, so that there are less and less challenges at the end of the period when you are actually filing that particular data. That will again help in uh, audit readiness as well as having the right data and focusing on actually planning rather than on the reviewing of that data. So moving forward, I'll, I'll talk about a quick use case of uh, how we help a tax profession ensure that the, the efficiencies get improved and at the same time more and more uh, data gets reviewed, which is directly being processed from the vendors. And when an invoice is re received from the vendors, uh, the whole process of extracting the data from that particular invoice to validating it against, let's say, a PO that, that would have been raised or the GRN. Uh, against which the, the, the goods are being received gives you an end-to-end -end reconciliation output and then only it gets posted onto your ERP. So this gives an overall OCR and IDP capability combined uh, with, with the expertise of reconciliation gives a very compliant output uh, at the end. And again, it, it helps in the vendor communication as well. So that the output of that reconciliation is given to the vendor so that the vendor knows if there are any challenges within the data or within the invoice that they have shared and quickly can rectify and give you the updated invoice. That will also help in expediting the payment process as well. Now, once we have done the purchase side of things, another uh, compliance challenge that would come to a tax profession is around uh, the digital signature challenge. Now, this is not a challenge if uh, you are into a business where, uh, or, or in a region where you are not supposed to digitally sign an invoice before sharing, but more and more governments and authorities around the globe are mandating that any invoice that you are sharing with your, uh, with your customer must be digitally signed. And that's where for bulk invoicing, or for all the invoices and digital invoices that you are sharing, sharing across, having a quick digital signing platform helps and ensures that the, the time lag in sharing those invoices to your customers is less and less. Now moving towards one step further. So once we have got the, the purchases and supplies data in a bit of a streamlined manner and reviewed automatically through a system, through bots, through AI and ML, uh, the next portion is ensuring that that whole data comes to a central text engine. Now, this central text engine can reside within, within a cloud or within, within your own technology premises, depending upon uh, the GDPR compliance and the data security needs. And at the same time, this can connect to all different sort of data sources. Whether we talk about a point of sale, uh, which will be generating your, your, your sales invoices, and generally, the point of sales are not line level or line to line integrated to your ERP. They are integrated to ERP at a, at a summary level. And that's where most of the challenges come in from an audit readiness perspective or from a reconciliation perspective. So such central uh, platform of tax engine and tax data warehouse helps you collate and prepare a central data. So it, it will extract data from different systems, POS systems, plus we can leverage bots to extract data from websites of customs and import export duties and et cetera, and have all of these sitting at a central location. Now, before it can sit in, in the raw format, it 
can also be collected and massaged in the way the, it is required by the tax authorities. And that's where uh, you can run all sort of uh, tax manipulations and compliance platforms and compliance checks on that to ensure that the final output of, uh, of is in the required format. If you are going to file into five different uh, geographies, uh, the, the output becomes uh, a compliant format or a ready to file format in those four or five geographies. And at the same time, you have a audit file ready in case there are any audits. So backup of that return uh, is always ready, ready to be submitted to tax authorities just in case. Now, generally, the journey towards having uh, a perfect uh, text technology architecture starts from understanding of the existing architecture and then leveraging these tools. And one of the points that Steve rightly highlighted was going in a phase by phase or an equity approach. Uh, this would even be recommended. Uh, just give you a small example. Let's say we have automated uh, some uh, invoice payment approval workflow. Uh, just take an example. In that case, what we would do, I would uh, prepare that workflow automation and just uh, adapt it for like the Akash, yep. Akash your, your voice is breaking up, so make sure you're close to the mic. Sure. So um, I was talking about the iterative and uh, approach uh, to ensure that. Uh, the automation. So that's where the, the whole engine or, or the automation was. Akash, you're, bra you're breaking up again. There is some issue with my internet, probably. Yeah. Is this uh, am, I, am I better now? That's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what I was saying is, on to the iterative ap approach, uh, what we do is generally. Uh, if we are uh, automating a workflow, we would do it for an X amount. It's, I was giving an example of invoice payment approval workflow. So for starters, if we implement it, we would do it for let's say, all invoices up to 5,000 euros. We'll fall and use this automation. And once uh, the business team and the others involved stakeholders are confident onto it, you then roll it out for 10,000, 15,000. And even we can do department by department. So that's generally the way of doing things, of ensuring that it is tried and tested and then rolled out to the rest of the uh, rest, rest of your organization. So let me, let me stop you there, uh, uh, Akash. So that means you do module, a modular approach, but you start at the base where the data comes from, the finance uh, environment, correct? Correct, correct, yeah. absolutely. Now moving towards the, the third quadrant or the knowledge quadrant, which is uh, very, very much important nowadays, given uh, we are so much, we are seeing so much innovation in the, in the overall technology domain and tax is becoming complicated and complicated, not just in terms of uh, the, the regulatory complication, but also the way the tax regulators are becoming more and more tax heavy and, and technology heavy, so to say. Uh, if we take an example of 10 years ago, uh, the regulators were maybe 10 years behind uh, in terms of technology compared to corporates uh, with, the, with the ERPs and advanced systems that large corporations used. But fast forward today, uh, the tax regulators are using all the technology available uh, right from taking the real-time invoicing and, and the other data and running all sort of ML on top of it just to ensure compliance. So that's where the corporates need to ramp up and, uh, and adapt to this changed uh, situation of regulators having more and more technology innovation at their end as well. And that's where having, having a knowledge platform, which will not only just ensure that uh, your tax professionals and ERP players and, and others who are involved in your team understand what is happening in the, in the industry, but also understands the nitty gritty and, and the main key areas uh, which, which need to be focused on while planning for any, any digital transformation project at your end. And that would not only help in the overall success, but ensure that uh, the, the efficiency improvement or the ROI of, of such digital transformation projects are in line with the expectations. And here, uh, it, everything is laid down in different belts. So right from yellow, orange, green, and black, there, there is a different level of uh, tax and technology awareness being imparted to ensure that the, the, the projects which have been implicated and the projects which have been executed are right at the, at the expectation of the organization. And as an output, 
what we will see is taxologists and tax technology engineers and and the tax domain experts coming out from the from the oral belt system yeah the yellow belt and the orange belt should be understood to be an awareness so the yellow belt synchronizes the taxonomy between it finance and tax people the orange belt makes you familiar with concepts like the t3 plan we addressed uh, from the light green belt onwards you start becoming a true specialist in the in the crossroad between tax and technology and obviously to move from dark green belt to black belt as uh, akash indicated you need to be able to uh, present in front of a black belt uh, audience uh, your t3 plan of your in where you are in house in the lead of that t3 plan uh, to, to really qualify for uh, a facilitated black belt uh, uh, type of uh, training. So this is uh, one of the first, if not the first, which covers it all the way to black belt. Black belts are 1% of your finance tax community. So you have 500 people, uh, you have 400 uh, finance people, that means four black belts. You have uh, 100 tax people, means you have one black belt for, for tax maybe. So, you know, this, this is still uh, under development, but that's the current setup where people strive for. And, and we, use, uh, we use the percentages in line with what you see on black belts on supply chain, uh, uh, the, the belt system on supply chain professionals. All right. Yeah, I think uh, a good percentage figure uh, right there, Steve. I think uh, that's what is needed uh, nowadays because uh, these projects are not small projects anymore. Uh, the digital transformation, especially on the on the tax front and the compliance front, uh, they are huge and they need a lot of involvement from all stakeholders. Uh, like you said there. Now mo moving to the third quadrant, we have got uh, communication between your teams. Uh, there we would like to talk about compliance tracker and automation with uh, now in, in nowadays like going back to the my persona of a regular taxpayer who would be spending more time reviewing the data and then collate collating the data rather than planning planning of the, of uh, an improvement of the overall compliance processes here we have got another tracker tool which enables that particular user to ensure that nowadays uh, the compliance tracking across the globe is a challenge and that's where having a platform a singular platform enables him to ensure that there are no no compliance slippages or there are no missed deadlines across the geographies that a particular corporation is operating in i'm pretty sure that the tools right now being used like uh, emails and etc or maybe a shared drive would be giving them the right output but in case there can be can be a slip of mind or there can be a slip in the in the overall information on, on, on how it is getting updated and that's where uh, even even a slip on one geography on of one uh, particular compliance can can cause a large penalty and that's where having a central platform or a central tool where all their compliances are being loaded and then a track through let's say a mobile app or a web interface would help the overall team uh, being staying compliant on top of the overall compliance and that this gives or that goes to the overall dashboard of how from overall compliance that okay everything is compliant and gives a CFO tax compliance dashboard and now moving to the other part of using automation ways or that's what we call bots uh, to ensure that the, the processes which are being done on a repetitive stage uh, that could be, let's say, for, for a company or an organization who is doing a lot of imports and exports. This could be uh, trying to capture the data from a customs document, which could be over 100 data points. So someone trying to do that uh, manually on, on a month-to-month -month or on a day-to-day -day basis can be a hectic job. And that's where bots and AIML can come in and use and extract the required information, validate it, and bring it together into the ERP or into a tax engine that's where the reconciliations can happen and this would technically mean uh, most of the processes uh, which are depending upon a lot of human intervention and uh, are susceptible to errors can be can be pushed to a to an automation cycle and avoid an improve overall situation now the, the end result of using bots and all the automation is to have a hyper automation platform but that's where uh, all the information related to 
uh, related to your purchases, sales, your general ledgers. So practically all your finance data is coming across into a data lake, a data warehouse. That's where the data management is happening. It is ensuring that the, the invoices are digitally signed and are sent across to your to your customers. Uh, your purchases are being streamlined. And at the end, you have an intelligent tax compliance platform, which is preparing your tax returns, uh, basis the geography it needs to file in, having a ready to file format out of it. There is a rule engine which can be configured. And this whole gives a complete automation. Now this is what it looks like, a complete automated architecture. And every piece here can be, can be a one small project which is executed on a modular basis or on a, on a department basis. Uh, and, and you see some uh, ROI and overall efficiency improvement, then you scale it across to the organizations. Now, I, I talked much about having all these, all these tools and technology to bring all the data together. Now, as an output of that, what we see is, is a dashboard, a CFO dashboard or a compliance head dashboard, where in a single shot view, he's able to determine what is happening, what, where are we compliant, and even gives figures around purchases and sales. So maybe we can have a quick snapshot of, of this dashboard. Akash, I'm just speaking, yeah, I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah. Um, and uh, there, are, there could be multiple use cases for this dashboard, right from giving an overview to ensuring your compliance status to even a business health. So uh, no, it, it can be used uh, for all those different purposes. Yeah. So what we are seeing right now in front of us is a bad compliance dashboard or a global bad compliance dashboard, which eventually will have you uh, graphs and the projections available right on your budget for any CFO or any tax manager. And you will be even able to view the written statistics. So this isn't uh, hasn't been limited only to the indirect taxation. This can also be clubbed to a centralized platform for managing everything at a single dashboard for for specifically the finance and the tax sites. And applicably relevant statuses can be viewed for the various type of data even. And there comes a standard portal as well from where you can even manage required sales, purchase, business data, or any other applicable business data. Now, after the data has been injected in the tool, uh, high level projections or even statistics are also provided uh, on, in this kind of dashboards where directly statistics or, or the projections or comparisons or the summary of your business performances would be available. And even extended via reports, applicable reports can also be uh, added in this kind of centralized portal to help and assist into the right monitoring and, and the review process and making it more faster and automated based on the approach that Akash and Steve added in front of us. So uh, that's how, yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mashuk. I'm also wary about the time and seeing uh, people have to go to other sessions. Uh, so maybe Akash and, and Mashuk, uh, and maybe a few pointers um, you have for the audience uh, before we dash off and, and maybe uh, although that's that's probably going to happen separately, those three or three people on the audience who will raise questions, we, we get back to them uh, uh, on a one-on-one on -on -one base, if you're fine with that, because those yeah. are very specific uh, questions. Uh, one, one person maybe addressed that. Uh, what advice would you give to people who are starting in the tax arena, two, three years of experience, and only use Excel and ERP systems currently? What tools should we invest in training uh, so what tools uh, should uh, should they be trained on? Um, Akash, Mashuk, can he? So one recommendation strongly on uh, having uh, investing, investing learning efforts on the data transformation and the analytics portion, along with uh, automation tools for uh, written automation solutions where compliance checks and validations are done automatically. And uh, even uh, applicable configurations can be done for the validation checks and the compliance checks that any of the tax person intends to have in the platform. So just the straight answer would be investing on the tax transformation and analytics tools and okay. transformation tools and even connectors if those are available in the market. Yeah, one one important feature, which was my connecting slide where uh, we connecting the dots is that uh, SIFMAP has a, a more than 100 connectors um, uh, on, on sources of data. So that obviously makes it easier to build a dashboard like the one Mashuk already uh, showed. 
Um, uh, and the whole world makes dashboards right now, so that's not unique. The uniqueness should be uh, to cater for a dashboard which really fits the needs of your tax talent uh, going forward. I think that's going to be one of the pointers uh, I share with the audience uh, to don't forget the people because they're just the slowest moving part as we started this, uh, this exercise. Um, Akash, any final points you want to make? I think I would I would recommend that you know whenever there is a there is overall scope for improvement absolutely, but on the digital transformation journey always start and move back. So right now you might have a problem, uh, but it's always advisable to to move back a few steps and see the root or where the data is originating and solve it there only. So you know in, in my example, if, if purchases data is your problem, look at how your vendor communication and vendor onboarding and vendor process and when purchase invoice processing is happening. If, if supplies data is your challenge, look at all the different supply data sources and look at the challenges with that. And while we connect and extract the data, it's important to even, even solve the problem at those, those root causes. So I, I would recommend always modularize the problem and then there, there are different tools available into the market which can solve each of those uh, different set of challenges that are there in the overall process. So go to the root course and then find the, the, the relevant tools. And well, start with people and processes, of course, and then have the technology. There's a variety of technology yeah. tools. I, I'm always amazed with the, the pure obsession to tools. And, and as Akash and me had many discussions on that, we, we really believe that to, to cater for the right team, the right process before you start uh, selecting the tools, because there's a multitude of tools and certainly Signet has a lot of them uh, to offer. So thanks very much. Uh, this was a great session. Uh, uh, thanks Akash, thanks Mashuk for uh, your valuable contribution and thanks for the audience to stick around a little bit longer than the four o'clock. Uh, curfew we had so much appreciated and uh, please keep uh, keep tuned because we have another session coming up uh, probably in one or two months time on doc 7 and the tools around that so people interested in that please register for that and uh, follow our uh, webinar um, uh, calendar on our website again thanks for your attention and enjoy the day <laughs>